Hey everybody, this is Anthony with VR Game Rankings and welcome to another episode of the Daily Vlog Series. This of course is episode 57. It is Wednesday, December 20th. And before we get into the news and stuff, I just wanted to comment on yesterday I said that we're going to do a shorter show. And it's funny because I say this and then all of a sudden we get a ton of comments from a lot of the viewers that say, no, they like the 30-minute show. They like 28-minute episodes. They don't want it to be a shorter show. So what do I do? I'm kind of caught between a rock and a hard place here. What I've decided to do is... I'm going to go ahead and stick with this shorter show for a couple of weeks, kind of give it a chance, see how it works out, and then I can reevaluate it later. So basically, the daily vlog really, if you want to get down to the brass tacks of it, this is going to be a constantly evolving process of me figuring out what works best. Uh, in terms of editing and, and, and all kinds of things. So basically, it is going to be an ongoing process, and I'm going to learn as I go along. So we're going to go ahead and try this kind of 20-minute-ish length for a little while, see how that works out, and then I can reevaluate it later. So um, the long term, basically, is that we could go to longer shows. We could go to even shorter shows. I don't know. I'm going to experiment with this for a while, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the news because we do have some major news today. But before we have the first news story, I do have an announcement to make. So VR Game Rankings, we are changing our name. AR Game Rankings. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so this has to do with the number one story of the day, Magic Leap one. Yes, Magic Leap 1 has been unveiled. The moment of truth. This is it. Magic Leap has put their cards on the table to a degree. To a degree, they've put their cards on the table. And we do have some concrete, legitimate information about Magic Leap 1, the first iteration of the Magic Leap hardware that is going to be coming sometime in the year 2018. Yes, this product is going to launch in the year 2018. Okay, now, before I get into the entire discussion about Magic Leap, which will probably dominate this episode, um, but before I get into that, I wanted to give you guys just a little bit of a backstory on my situation in regards to Magic Leap, because there's some of you out there that know this very well. You know that I've kind of been a champion of Magic Leap. I've kind of been a closet supporter of Magic Leap. Most of the time, when you hear Magic Leap on various podcasts or in various news stories, there's usually kind of a rolling of the eyes, like, oh, Magic Leap again. Here's this Ponzi scheme. Here's this scam. Here's this vaporware. You know, that's what you normally hear about Magic Leap. But if you guys have heard the Vivecast, if you've seen VR Roundtable, you'll know that I've never been this guy. I'm not rolling my eyes. Um, what I'm rolling my eyes at is, oh my God, how much of an investment has all these different companies made in Magic Leap? And so my take with Magic Leap is this. If you go back through history, okay, if you go back through history Every so many years, like every 20 to 30 years, there is a major technological breakthrough that happens. And all you have to do is just look back at the course of history and you will see how this has happened. I mean, just think about the 20th century, okay, the entire 1900s, you know, the last 100 years, the decade of the 20th century. Think of all the technological advancements that we got over that 100-year period. And some of these technological advancements were incredible. Incredible. I mean, we got flight. Flight. Airplanes. Okay. Television. Phones. Radios. Uh, internet. I mean, you name it. I mean, think of all the technological stuff that happened in that 100-year period. And there were some people that were born very early in the 1900s, and they got to experience all of these magical things. Well, my position has always been that this is going to continue to happen. There are going to be breakthroughs. There are going to be major breakthroughs that come along that are going to change the game, okay? And so when I first heard about Magic Leap and I first heard about the idea behind Magic Leap, the idea of shooting natural light into your eyes 
and not not trying to like recreate a world but but like shooting light into your eyes and letting your brain do most of the work when i first heard about this concept there's something about it that just spoke to me and and i felt like like maybe these guys are on to something. Maybe these guys have that next dream. And one of the things that I've mentioned on like some of the VR Roundtable podcasts, when we got into this discussion of Magic Leap, I said, you know, I really believe there is going to be a technology at some point. And I don't know that the Magic Leap 1 is going to be this. But but what I'm saying is, is I really believe there's going to be something that comes out at a certain point where you're going to go to like a Best Buy or something and you're going to be able to try it and you're going to try it and you're going to be like, oh my God, what do I have to do? Do I have to sell my car? I'll give you my car right now. Can I give you my car and you give me this headset? There is going to be a product like that. I guarantee you, man, anybody that is like doubting this, Get your head out of the sand because there is going to be a product like this. Now, I'm not saying that Magic Leap 1 is that product, but it could be, okay? It could be. Now, it's probably going to be like Magic Leap 4, okay? We're at Magic Leap 1, Creator's Edition, and it could be, say, Magic Leap 4 or something like that by the time we actually get a product that just freaking blows our minds and it changes the game okay so first of all let's back up a little bit and let's talk about what did we find out today in regards to this magic leap one okay so first of all we do not have a price there is no price for this okay this is not really being marketed to end users to end consumers it's being called the creator edition Okay, Creator's Edition. Now, they didn't call it Creator's Edition for shits and giggles. They called it Creator's Edition because they're kind of letting you know this is not really a primetime product that we're going to try to sell to soccer moms and to average folks out there. This is not one of those products. This is an incredibly high-end, specialized product that is only going to appeal to a small set of people that are really into this and have a good chunk of disposable income to throw at this. So that's why they're not really marketing this particular unit to end users at this point. Another topic is no gaming controller has been shown. They showed a controller, okay, but there's not a lot of buttons there. There's no trigger for a gun. So this is not the gaming controller that you would need. I mean, we're VR game rankings, okay? And so, I mean, we are VR game rankings and we are interested in the game side of, of all of this. And so gaming is our focus. So not a real gaming controller that has been displayed. But I don't think that is any kind of make or break thing because a controller could come later. Not a problem. Okay, so the headset itself is called Lightwear. And you do have a tethered companion, which is called Light Pack, which can be clipped to your belt Or you can have kind of like a shoulder pad or like a guitar strap that you wear over your shoulder and you clip it to that. Okay, and then there is going to be, of course, the remote controller, which has a touchpad and it does have six degrees of freedom tracking. Okay, Um, first off, let's talk about the actual headset itself, Lightwear. Okay, the amazing thing about this is I'm impressed. I don't know. Are you guys impressed? I'm impressed with this headset because the one thing that we always heard about Magic Leap. Now, this was a long time ago when somebody would travel to Fort Lauderdale. They would get a demonstration of the Magic Leap technology. Somebody like Addy Robertson or something. I forget who exactly got firsthand looks at the Magic Leap uh, product. But basically what they were saying back then, it was this big, huge, giant contraption. There were wires coming out everywhere. It was this huge monstrosity. It was like a Dr. Frankenstein type of thing. How are they going to get this into a small enough device that you can actually wear on your head and not look like a complete idiot? And I have to admit, as excited as I was for the possibilities of Magic Leap, I thought that this was going to be a big, bulbous kind of contraption. We've seen a lot of these AR headsets. We've seen, of course, Microsoft HoloLens. We've seen the Avagant uh, headset. And all of them 
all of these AR headsets, they're bulky, they're bulbous, they kind of, you know, they kind of stick out here and it's not a great look, you know, it's not a fashion statement. I can't see anybody walking around their neighborhood wearing one of these gigantic things on their head. That That is not going to fly. And if AR is really going to kill everything, which I do believe it will at a certain point, although really it's going to get into semantics um, because it's going to be AR, MR, VR. It's going to be a mix between all of them. We just had that story on NVIDIA about how NVIDIA is saying, look, let's not get into AR, VR, MR. It's all it's all a wash. You know, it, it's the future headsets are going to do whatever you want them to do. If you want to block out all of reality and create a completely artificial reality, it will do that. If you want to have actual reality and not have anything, it'll do that. And you will be able to have any little step in between. And it'll almost be like a dial. Like how much of reality do you want? How much of reality do you do not want? And you just turn the dial. I mean, that's kind of the future there. So we don't need to get into that kind of a debate. However, what I'm saying here is that AR is supposed to be something that you're going to be able to wear all day long. Uh, well, I mean, maybe not all day long, but you're going to be able to wear it a lot. You're going to be able to wear it outside. You're going to be able to walk around your house with it and all of these kinds of things. And if you have a big, giant, bulky, bulbous type headset, I don't know that that is going to fly long term. OK, um, and so seeing the first images of the Magic Leap one, like the first second that I saw it, you know, I woke up today and I saw this story and I'm like, like, oh shit, Magic Leap One, this is gonna be freaking awesome. And so I go to that website, you know, and you at the website and you kind of scroll down. And when I first saw that guy with that headset on his head, I was like, wow, this thing is not that huge. This thing is not that bulky. These guys weren't lying. They were saying that it's gonna be bigger than sunglasses, but not some huge giant contraption. And they pretty much knocked it out of the park from what I can tell um, based on what I've seen. I mean, this is not this is something that you could wear around your house. And if somebody came over, they're sitting in your house. I don't think they're going to look at you like you're some kind of weirdo with some huge bulbous thing on your head. Now they might think, wow, you got some uh, high end space tech goggles on you there. You almost look like some type of comic book character a little bit, but it's not this big giant bulbous thing. So I was extremely impressed. I am extremely impressed with the size of lightwear. Yeah, they're calling it lightwear and there's a reason for that. Now, one of the things I have to mention it. One of the things that I have to mention about all of this is you guys want to go to Rolling Stone, okay? Go to Glixel. Brian Crescente has a very long article on this whole thing. Basically, Rolling Stone was given the red carpet treatment in Fort Lauderdale. They were able to go to the Magic Leap offices. They were able to demo this stuff out. And Brian Crescente has a very good article on this. I know I was throwing a little bit of shade at Brian Crescente not too long ago because there I forget what article it was, but there was all kinds of like typos and misspelled words and stuff. And I was like, damn, Glixel needs an editor real bad. And here I am throwing rocks from a glass house. You know, I talked about this before. So Brian Crescente killed it on this article. I'll tell you right now, I've, I've read this article. This show is late. You guys are getting this show like an hour late because I started, I'm starting it an hour late. I'm well behind schedule in starting this show. And a big part of that is I was reading this gigantic long article in Rolling Stone that is a very good article. You definitely have to check out this article. I give much props to Brian Crescente. Did a wonderful job. It's a very interesting article. There's a lot of great information in here. And so a lot of the information that I'm talking about today is kind of sourced from that article. So I definitely want to give credit where credit is due. Glixel, Rolling Stone, Brian Crescente, much love. Okay, so anyway, yeah, what he was saying, because he got to try all this out, he was amazed at how lightweight everything is, incredibly lightweight. So they call it lightwear. And as you read through the article, you'll realize that their long-term ambitions with this is they want people to be able to wear the Magic Leap 1, or I mean, their and their future iterations, obviously. They want people to be able to wear this thing all day long. And they talked about like how you how you wear socks all day long or how you wear shoes all day long. It has to have that kind of level of comfort where you're you're willing to deal with it 
all freaking day long. So it is incredibly lightweight, which is very impressive. Now you do, of course, have um, you do have this uh, light pack which is basically the computer. This is basically the computer that is running the show. And I believe, we'll see in the article, it's interesting. In the article, it says there's one wire that connects the light wear to the light pack. But in a lot of the pictures that I've seen, it really looks like there's two wires. So I'm not sure what that is about. But anyway, um, this light pack that you can put on your belt, you can clip it onto your belt or, or possibly like a shoulder pad or like a guitar kind of strap thing. Basically, it's supposedly similar in power to a MacBook Pro or possibly an Alienware gaming laptop, okay? But it's, it's um, compressed into this small little puck-like device, and that's the question. How did they pack all that crap in there? How long is battery life? Like, we don't know any of this. We don't know what kind of GPU or CPU is in there. And then also in the lightware itself, in the actual headset itself, it has a computer in there as well that is processing all the information that all the various sensors that are in the headset are um feeding it there are eight sensors on the front of the device okay four built-in microphones there's a whole bunch of cameras i mean it really is some next level type stuff this is kind of the jetsons this is the future everybody wonders when are we going to get to the future this is a piece of the future this is the future and it's coming in 2018 flying cards might take a little bit longer but at least magic leap is coming in 2018 okay so let's see here what else do i need to talk about so yeah it's you know it's using light field photonics and what exactly is light field photonics well i'm not a scientist and i, I don't really know that much about this stuff to be totally honest with you but basically reality like what we perceive as reality like when you're looking at something you're not looking at the actual object you're looking at light reflecting off the object when you look at a tree and you see a tree, you're not actually seeing the tree. You're seeing light that is reflecting off the tree, and you're also seeing the past because it's kind of in, it's like a, a fraction of a millisecond or whatever in the past. You're seeing the past light of that. And so basically everything, like there's a light field everywhere. When we take a photograph, we capture a very thin slice of that light field. And so one of the things that we're gonna be hearing repeatedly in, in VR and AR is all about light fields and capturing light fields and all these special cameras that are going to millions of cameras that are going to stack together and they're going to capture a light field so that you can step around and look around inside the light field. It's kind of a minority report a little bit. Uh, if you've seen that movie Minority Report, you know, when they do the projection and stuff, it's kind of like that. Basically light fields, right? Okay. And so it features light field photonics, which again, we don't really know exactly what this means. Sound field audio, positional information from sound sources. Now, if you look at the headset band, there is these little built-in speakers that are on the side of it. So it does have built-in speakers similar to HoloLens in terms of how it's going to provide the audio. This does have eye tracking. It has voice recognition. It has head pose and gesture recognition. Um, four built-in microphones, six external cameras. The SDK is coming early in 2018. Um, Lightware, the headset itself, will be available in two different sizes. So they're basically going to have what they call the peanut head size, and then they're going to have the Tony Robbins model. <laughs> okay, but that's basically what I kind of think here is they're going to have the peanut head size, which is kind of like Dave Chappelle model, and then they're going to have the Tony Robbins OJ Simpson model for larger size heads. I'm going to have to get the Tony Robbins model. I know, I know, especially with my big old 72 IPD, right? Um, but there's also going to be an option for custom forehead, nose, and temple pads so that you can kind of get a, a dialed in fit. And then the other thing is they're working on eventually having the option for prescription lenses baked into the lightwear headset. So you'll be able to like input your prescription information and order a headset that will have that belt in. Now that's not going to be available right away, but it is something they're looking towards in the future. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's pretty much most of the basics again. Okay, so this is coming in 2018. 
Obviously, one of the huge issues here is the field of view, and Brian Crescente mentioned this several times. Now, he did sign a, a number of non-disclosure agreements, and he couldn't comment on everything, and he kind of couched his comments a little bit from that standpoint. And what he did say is that he took out a credit card and held it out to try to see if the field of view was bigger than that or not. And he said it was a lot bigger than that. It wasn't a credit card. And then what he said was it's basically like a VHS tape that you hold out in front of you with your arms half extended. Not this far, but kind of like that with a VHS tape. So basically what it sounds like is the field of view is better than HoloLens, but it's not anywhere near like the 110 degree field of view that we're getting with these VR displays. So a, a number of people have estimated that this field of view is probably somewhere between 50 and 65 degrees, somewhere in that range. HoloLens, I believe, is like 40 or something like that. So uh, the SDK is coming in early 28. We do not have a release date for this. Again, like I said, no price. And I'll tell you what, when no price is announced, that means it's going to be damn expensive, all right? And they're talking about a MacBook Pro or an Alienware laptop that is built into this thing, plus the glasses and all of that and the little uh, controller. I would imagine that this is going to cost in the... Well, HoloLens is three grand. Okay, so they've set the standard right there. HoloLens is three grand. Again, this is the creator edition. This is not being sold to end level consumers. I don't think you're going to be able to go to Walmart and get yourself Magic Leap. Okay, you're not going to be able to go to Target and get yourself Magic Leap. I don't even know if you're going to be able to go to Best Buy and get yourself Magic Leap. This could be something that you just have to order online. And this could be multiple thousands of dollars. Like, I personally predict that this will be at least $2,500, maybe three grand, maybe four grand. Who knows? I'm telling you, this is going to be the type of stuff that it is. You're going to have to sell that extra car to finance this Magic Leap. Remember Ken Kutaragi way back in the days? You're going to have to get two jobs. Well, this is, this is kind of what I'm talking about here. You might want to get a second job because it might be that freaking impressive where you want to get a second job. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit. Well, I wanted to mention something from the article here. Now, this is a direct quote from this Rolling Stone article by Brian, Brian Crescente wrote this article, and, and this is a direct quote from the, from the article. Technology like this is moving us toward a new medium of human computing interaction, said David Nelson, creative director of the MXR lab at USC Institute for Creative Technologies. It's the death of reality. That is a powerful statement right there. It is the death of reality. Do you know like a hundred years from now, what we call reality is going to be so different than what we call reality right now because we're basically going to create the reality that we want. That's where we're moving to as humans. It's kind of weird. It's kind of scary. Actually, you know what? Speaking of scary, I wanted to mention this part as well. Now, this is another direct quote from this article, but I thought this was important and I wanted to mention it. Okay, so they're talking about this horror thing. Okay. Later, over lunch in a conference room, Avovitz says the team did once experiment with a horror experience. It was terrifying, he says. People would not go into the room anymore. It was very, very, very scary, almost life-threatening, threateningly scary. So we kind of said, okay, let's put that aside for now. Um, so this is something I've spoken about before as well, is like, where are we going with these horror experiences? Are we eventually going to get to the point where in some lab somewhere, someone's going to die because... They're going to create some horror experience that is so freaking realistic and so authentic and scary that it, it might cause someone to have a heart attack or something. I mean, yeah, that sounds a little bit crazy and hi hyperbole and all that kind of thing. But I'm telling you, I believe probably this will happen at some point. Somebody will freaking die or somebody will have a heart attack because we're playing around with reality. I, and this isn't just an episode from uh, 
Black Mirror, okay? We're playing around with reality here, and eventually we're going to go a little bit too far in, in certain directions. And the horror thing, that is freaky. That's freaky that they say that people will not go into that room anymore. I mean, that is kind of crazy. So anyway, I just wanted to get that quote in. Um, so that's pretty much all the stuff I wanted to get to on on Magic Leap 1. And, and, and basically, so... I'll kind of sum it up like this. So ultimately, what does this really mean to me personally or to you personally? Like, are you going to be buying a Magic Leap next year? Man, I would have to say probably not. Okay, so number one, we're talking about a field of view that might be 50 to 60 degrees. And that is a bit of a buzzkill. That, that is truly a bit of a buzzkill here. Um, the other thing is we're talking about a price that is going to be in the multiple thousands of dollars, which that is pretty painful as well. The other thing is, is this is a creator's edition. It's not like they're going to have Halo VR available to play on it or Fallout 4 Magic Leap edition, you know, so they're not going to have any of that stuff. Now they will have some, they'll definitely have some entertaining things to screw around with on this that are going to be breakthrough. They really are. There's going to be some amazing stuff. But I don't know that it's going to be worth it to like add another mortgage onto your house to, to grab one of these puppies. But I don't know, man. I'm really interested in it. I hope there is some way where uh, by geographical location there will be some place you can go. Maybe you can sign up for some type of demo where you can get a demo of this because it could be it could be the type of thing where I demo it and I just say fuck it. I don't care. $5,000. I don't care. I'm going, I'm getting a loan, whatever I got to do, I am getting this. That could be a possibility. So, so yeah, that's, that's the situation with Magic Leap. Um, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's something we're going to cover very closely. It's something I'm going to keep my eye on. We don't have a ton of information too. It's not like they released videos and stuff. I kind of thought that when this announcement would happen, like it would happen on stage somewhere and there'd be a lot of talk. There'd be people walking around wearing these things. There'd be more kind of in impressions like that. But we really don't have that right now. That, that, that could come, of course. The Winter Consumer Electronics Show is not far away at all. So it's very possible we could get more information on this at the Winter Consumer Electronics Show. Like maybe this is just kind of the basics and then at the winter CES, we get a lot more details. So that will be interesting as well. Okay, so basically, guys, I mean, I've hit the 27-minute mark, and it has been all Magic Leap all the time. And I had a few other little minor stories, but we're just not going to get to them now. And I definitely went farther than I normally wanted to go. But hey, this is Magic Leap 1. This is the future, guys. The future is now. We are Well, the future is 2018. Okay, at some point in 2018, the future will arrive, and it will have a little Magic Leap logo on the side of it. And I can't wait. I can't wait. You know, Lucasfilm, right, is working with Magic Leap. I and mean, there's a lot of companies that are working with Magic Leap. They've seen some incredible stuff and they have to work with this company. And so there are going to be some true breakthrough experiences that people will be able to check out in 2018. All righty, guys, that basically wraps it up. Hope you liked Magic. Hope you were interested in Magic Leap because that's all you got today. This has been episode 57 of our daily vlog series for VR Game Rankings. It, of course, is Wednesday. December 20th. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy. Later.